Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back inside the Moscone Center. We're here in Moscone North, uh, wrapping up our coverage here at VMworld 2019. Glad to have you with us here on theCUBE as we continue our 10th year of, uh, 10th consecutive year of coverage here of the event. Stu Miniman along with John Walls, joined now by Rob Emsley, who is the Director of Data Protection uh, Product Marketing at Dell EMC. Rob, good to see you, sir. Hey, John. Saw you almost when I walked, you were the first person I saw when I walked in the room the other day. You were. And now you'll be one of the last. I know. Uh, and uh, Efri Natel Shai, who is the Director of Data Protection and Cloud Native Apps at Dell EMC. Efri, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Yeah, f first off, let's just, let's just talk about the world of you know, data protection in general here. Everybody's talking multi and hybrid and all these things. Um, your world's changing a little bit, right? Because it of is. these new environments and these new opportunities. So yeah. if you could just paint that 30,000 foot picture first of, of thematically how, how your world is uh, evolving. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the key word in data protection is data. You know, and I think that wherever it is created and wherever it is uh, managed, you know, customers uh, need to look after it. You know, there's the old adage that there's only two things that, that customers worry about. One is their employees, and two is their data. So as we've seen uh, the uh, adoption of, uh, of, of cloud as, a, uh, as an infrastructure model, um, and you're starting to see uh, many customers extend their on-premises infrastructure to the cloud, um, and using the cloud for production level uh, applications, they realize that, um, and often they're told, uh, you got to do something about your data. So that's led to um, all vendors, and especially ourselves, uh, over the last several years, really expanding uh, the portfolio and the capabilities that we have from an on-premises centric environment uh, to the multi-cloud. Yeah, so every, uh, a lot of discussion about Kubernetes. Before we get into that, you've got cloud native in your title. And yeah. Rob talked about data and talked about the applications. I'm yes. hoping you can bring us inside as to, you know, what's different when we're talking about cloud native applications that from a data protection standpoint, you know, wh what do you have to think about differently? Is it, the, you know, the microservices architecture and containers fundamentally change the way things are done? Is it, you know, similar to what we've done in the past? Definitely, we see customers, so some customers are taking what they have right now and they move it into cloud native infrastructures. A lot of customers are building new applications and new workloads, and they build it on top of new applications. So they basically build a whole new set of applications and infrastructure and want to combine them together. And they come to us um, and ask us, how do I protect this? And these things spin up, spin down, move around. They have very different uh, life cycle than the traditional um, applications. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's, it's funny, you know, Rob, I think back to, you know, it's like tape, you know, how we dealt this coastal environment versus disk versus, you know, can, right, containerized application. Boy, by the time I want to set something up, isn't that gone? And, you know, know, things move around all over the place. It's, uh, you know, got to put a different, uh, you know, different types of environments than you need to span all of these. I was chatting with, with Efri earlier, and we were talking about, well, what's, what's changed um, kind of in the last couple of years around the, uh, the deployment and usage of, of Kubernetes, the deployment of containers, and you know, Efri was saying that one of the most fundamental changes is the introduction of persistent volumes. You know, and, and as soon as persistency comes into the mix, you know, that's where you know things start to change. And you know, Efri's phone started ringing with respect to, hey, what are you doing uh, to bring data protection into uh, you know this environment? Yeah, I think two years ago, everything was said to be stateless. Uh, and then suddenly people understood that's not enough. You need to add state, some state to existing applications. And then the notion of persistent volumes came along and then um, customers and developers saw that it's actually working quite nicely and they started relying more and more and moving more state into their applications running on containers environments. So uh, the first thing that customers ask us about is where do I store my data? Where's the primary volume that is done by our storage folks. The next question is how do I protect my data? Mm. And this is where we come into the picture and we offer uh, a 
an architecture that is built for containerized environment and takes care of that life cycle that we talked about before, containers are coming and going, you need to protect the data and the containers, the data and the metadata together in order to bring that protection level that customers look for. You know, as, as, as the uh, concerns about data protection have been elevated now in you know, C-suite discussions now, um, has that created a, a different uh, approach or maybe a, a change of tone or tenor from your clients to you because the discussions are being elevated in their own businesses and, and so there's is there a different kind of attention being paid to this or different kinds of concerns than maybe three, four years ago? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, one of the things we run every couple of years is a, uh, a, a global study. We call it the Global Data Protection Index. Um, you know, th this year we, we interviewed 2,200 uh, IT decision makers um, and we, we kind of asked them about, you know, how, how are they valuing data protection and also how are they valuing data? Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing that has definitely changed is that the value of data to them has become uh, more critically important. Mm -hmm. I think it's always been important, but I think you know, as they start thinking about data as capital, mm -hmm. you know, they are starting to realize that it's only capital if you've got it. If you don't have it, it's, it's, it's nothing to you. And it's only yours if you have it. Well, yeah. Right, and nobody else. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. That's a really good idea. Uh, Efri, uh, Kubernetes, of course, is open source, and everybody's yes. got what they're, what they're doing in it. Uh, you've got an announcement, uh, so some, some work you're doing with VMware, yep. and it's open source also. Uh, bring us inside a little bit, Valero, how did we get to this point? Uh, you know, yep. is this you know, part of the CNCF yet, uh, kind of uh, being submitted, or how does that fit into the, the whole community? Yep, sure, so um, as you said, and we talked about it uh, earlier this week with uh, Beth and uh, people at uh, the data protection announcements, we are working with collaboration with Valero, uh, now part of uh, VMware, in order to bring that data protection solution. So Valero is an open source project, uh, it's out there in the open. Uh, you have thousands of stars, GitHub stars, uh, very popular among the DevOps community about Kubernetes users. You can hear about it from customers that are looking for, for solutions. Valero is very good at uh, backing up cluster uh, containers and uh, applications. And we have a lot of experience in enterprise data protection, uh, making sure that you have a solution that um, has compliance, reporting, uh, you can track your data, you can uh, define policies, scheduling, all of that. Uh, so we are combining these two and collaborating with Valero in order to have a solution that answers both the needs of the backup admin, and they just want to go home knowing that their uh, production environment is protected, and the DevOps people and the Kubernetes administrators, and they just want to get the volume and forget about data protection. Everybody can work in their environment with the tools that they know, with the uh, permissions that they want, and they can both work together and be happy. And the companies that we work with are the ones that have good relationship between the DevOps team and the backup administrators, and they sit at the same table and talk to us, and everybody tells us what they want and what they need. And as a result, we build a solution so that we'll be able to answer the needs of both of them. So do you have to build sometimes those relationships within a company to get them to talk or, or collaborate in a, in a more conducive environment? Because you see all kinds, right? I mean, you see the full range. You just talked about that, Efri, that yep. some very successful, some very constructive, maybe some that, that aren't on the same page. And so that's almost part of your responsibility to come in before you even get to where yeah, yeah. you can talk about the work, we've got to talk about the collaboration. Yeah. That they're not there yet. Yeah. yeah. We usually come when there is a story. Um, people try to move their applications to production. Uh, the developers are already, already working on something and now the developers want volumes and the IT ops people tell them, no, 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 if you can't protect it according to our rules, we will not pass the audit. We cannot do that for you and that creates a friction inside those teams. In the organization that we talked with, there is recognition of that already, and now they come together to the table and they want to hear something that would, they would be able to work with us, both on the management on the IT ops and in the management on cube control and what DevOps people are using. 
Yeah. And it's and it's large companies that are, that are coming and talking to us. And I think you know when you get the large companies, quite often you have some more of these the, these different fiefdoms of of, uh, of users inside. But because they're large companies, they have you know certain requirements from a regulations and compliances perspective. Mm -hmm. So they they have those concerns. You know, but and you know, Effrey has been saying as we look at the early. Uh, design partners, customers that we're looking to work with, you know, they're big, they're big companies that are coming to us. Yeah. Right. Rob, can you just help us understand, we talked about Valero there, so some open source so software, does the PowerTech just yes. sit on top of that? Yeah, uh, yeah. so, yeah, it's a great question. So, um, you know, as you know, we introduced PowerProtect software at Dell Technologies World. It started shipping uh, to customers at the end of July, uh, and uh, Kubernetes support is really the first example of what we said that we were going to be able to do, which is more rapidly bring new workloads and new capabilities into our PowerProtect software offering than we've ever been able to do before. You know, we're really embarking on a quarterly release cadence, you know, which um, you know will allow us to, you know, to do things that you know in our existing portfolio, uh, our release cadence has often been measured in in, in many many months and, and quite often as, as long as a year and, and beyond. So. The, um, what we will do is the tech preview that we that we announced uh, t this week. You know, we will uh, roll that out in an upcoming release uh, in production, um, and that will become available to you know any of the Paraprotect software users. So, you know, right within the Paraprotect uh, software management interface, you know, that has the VMware support, Oracle, SQL, and file systems, we'll add the additional workload support of being able to protect Kubernetes, using the same workloads, the ability to create protection policies. And, and, and I'm interested, Efri, is, is with protection policies, because as you were saying about how the environment can change quite rapidly, mm -hmm. is that by using a policy, you don't need to watch for those changes. As changes happen, the policy will keep track of what it needs to do as far as yep. protecting those new applications as they come up and as they go away. Yeah, what happens is, the ones who define the policies are the IT operations and the backup admins. They want to comply with the rules that they have and they define the gold, silver, bronze policies, whatever have you. And then they can give it to the Kubernetes admins and the Kubernetes admins can say, okay, these are my volumes, these are my applications, I will just use kube control and an annotate those uh, objects. We will discover that, we'll automatically create a schedule that would create that, that backup. So in essence, the Kubernetes admin doesn't need, really need to care about the compliance rules, they need to care about policies, right. and the backup admin can take care of all the rest. And the applications are driving the policies, and not the, not the other way around. Yeah, I mean, the right. Kubernetes admins are used to defining policies in terms of how they provision their storage, for example. We want to do the same in the data protection area. So as far as things like retention periods, as far as whether or not the data needs to be replicated, whether or not the data needs to be gotcha. tiered to the cloud. Yeah. Those are all things that the IT admin team can do, and it sort of separates kind of, um, so orchestration and governance is, is a big part of PowerProtect software. Yeah, Rob, what I'd love to get your viewpoint on is data protection historically was not one of the faster moving things in the IT realm. Mm. Last two or three years at VMworld, it's been one of the hottest topic. I, I said, you know, the keynote on Monday yeah. felt like we were at Kubernetes World. Yeah. You know, not quite KubeCon <laughs> just yet, because there's a lot of projects there. But I walked down to the, the, the show floor, and it's not storage world like the past day, it's data protection world. It is. Big booths, yeah. lots of glowing, parties uh, from yeah, all these it, people. So, it's been customers, yeah. you know, are, are they embracing change? And what, what's that mean for your, your, your portfolio? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I think over the years, um, if you think about where do you go if you want to learn about data protection, uh, VMworld is probably one of the best shows to go to because we're all here. Um, I mean, you know, and you know, as you know, I've you know, I've been crazy enough to be in the data protection business for almost 15 <laughs> years now, um, and and it, it hasn't changed. If you if you want to talk to data protection vendors, then VMworld is a really good show to go to. You know, I think that that for us. Um, you know what VMware has done is it's is it's it, is it's prov provided a, a common foundation, you know, and that's also providing a common foundation to get us from on-premises into the multi-cloud environment. So once you develop um, uh, great 
data protection solutions in the VMware environment is that you, you, your, your target market becomes quite broad because mm -hmm. you know, there's so much uh, VMware virtualization out there in the market, but no, you're absolutely correct, is that you, know, you walk the show floor and uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting site. I think in, in addition to that, you also have a lot of, obviously, Kubernetes in the show. And I think what we have seen over the last couple of years is that customers were coming to us asking for solutions and this is why we were able with the PowerProtect architecture and platform to innovate more quickly and respond to those fast uh, changing trends because now you have persistency of volumes, now you have protection. VMware acquired Heptio, we could work together on creating that, that solution. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, we've been at uh, the KubeCon show for a number of years. Heptio, of course, had a presence last year. VMware had a bigger presence, but that maturation of uh, the, the storage component uh, was something we knew would take time. You know, we, we'd watched it in the virtualization world. Those of us that lived through that, you know, 10 to 15 years ago, um, and containerization, it, it, it's starting to reach that maturity and we're yeah. hitting that inflection point. Yeah. Uh, and if adoption. you also want to think about the announcement that Pat made on, on the uh, keynote on Monday, where he said we are going to work much more with PowerProtect to uh, address part, uh, data protection uh, capabilities. This is one of the things we are collaborating with the Heptio team. We are contributing to the open source. We are building together things that can move in the pace of Kubernetes and address the needs of our more legacy companies that need data protection with compliance. So Rob, that'll keep you in business for another 15 years. I hope so, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks for the time. Thank you. We appreciate that, especially on your birthday, right? Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, right, I'm sorry, tomorrow on your birthday, so <laughs> yeah. you'll be home for that. But exactly. uh, happy early birthday. Thank you very much. We should have had a cube cake. But, you should, uh, especially, yeah, especially uh, at the end of the day. I know, <laughs> I know. We, well, end of the day we come up with something better than a cake. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, gentlemen, thank you again. We Thanks, John. It. Thanks, Stu. Uh, we'll be back uh, in a little bit, uh, streaming conti uh, continuing coverage here of VMworld 2019 with some final thoughts from our panelists uh, in just a little bit. See you on the other side for that. <laughs>